morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, wherever you're coming to us today. Welcome to another episode of The Nonprofit Show. I am so thrilled because I have one of my favorite guests of all time on with me today, Tony Bell of Fundraising Academy at National University. And this is a really unique thing. We, we have a topic that's such a big topic that we're going to do one of our two-day drill downs. We don't do this very often, only a few times, a handful of times throughout the year. And today, as part of this two-day op opportunity, we're going to be talking about donor approaches and, and how to understand them. It's a big topic, and Tony, we could not have a better uh, guide for this conversation. So oh, I'm thank you. I'm super excited um, to, to jump into this. Again, if we haven't met yet, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Um, as our executive producer, uh, Kevin Pace, reminded us today, not a member of the Motion Picture Academy. <laughs> we have no votes. And Fundraising Academy, alas, has no votes, but you just have to deal with it. <laughs> Jer Jer Ransom, the nonprofit nerd, is off today. We'll be joining uh, with her tomorrow. Great. Again, we want to thank all of our presenting sponsors who make this conversation possible. From Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, Be Generous, Fundraising Academy at National University, who, by the way, was one of our very first sponsors, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, and The Nonprofit Nerd. We've done more than 700 of these episodes, so if you want to catch up, you can find us on any of our archive places from Roku, YouTube, Vimeo, and even Amazon Fire TV, where we have channels. You can also listen to The Nonprofit Show. We just hit uh, the 10,000th uh, marker milestone where 10,000 folks have downloaded or we've had 10,000 downloads of our podcast, which is amazing. Um, so we want to make sure everybody knows you can queue up content that way. Well, that's okay. a lot of, that's a lot of hours on a treadmill. <laughs> I know or vacuuming. <laughs> I know. Isn't that crazy? That's pretty exciting. It's fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Tony Bell, Senior Director, Relationship Center, National University, Fundraising Academy. Um, you know, it's really, I think, important for all of our viewers and listeners to know that you are a man who's come from the nonprofit sector. So when you talk about this in an educational way and through this whole process, you're a man who's been on the other side of the desk, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and and that's what really, I mean, those experiences in raising money uh, in my local community uh, is what made me so passionate about the sector. And then as I started seeing opportunities to support professional learning and professional development in the sector, then I was like, Psh, you know, <laughs> yes, that's where I need to be. So you know, for the last four years, I have been beyond grateful uh, to be part of National University and the Fundraising Academy uh, to help support professional learning uh, for the sector and really help elevate uh, the work and the voices of the folks that are so passionate about uh, the communities they serve. You know, Tony, I've said this to you privately. I've witnessed this publicly. In many ways, it breaks my heart that I did not know about this Um when I started doing this, just for my community, as, as a non-paid professional, just as a community activist, you know, 30 years ago, I would have raised millions and millions of dollars more. I left too much money on the table and for my community and for the things that I cared about. And so that's why this is, to me, um, it's such a personal thing. And I want to start off by explaining having you explain to our viewers and listeners that this is what we're going to talk about is is kind of like a if you will a small piece of a much bigger process so if you could talk briefly about the eight step cause selling cycle sure absolutely julie i'm happy to do that uh you know and, and again honored to be today's representative of this curriculum uh, so uh, Dr. David Lill uh, was one of the architects of, of this, or the architect of, of this curriculum. So it, it's great, again, to, 
to, to be here and, and help share it with everyone. But yeah, so uh, this is what everyone's seeing right now is our cause selling cycle this is an eight step cycle. Uh, today, we're going to focus on step three on approach. What I love about this curriculum is how uh, each of these steps just naturally flow into one another and support each other. But as a learner, like today, uh, you will still, with our focus on approach, you will still walk away with really great information and actionable uh, recommendations, if you will, uh, to help you, you know, enhance your work. So it's great, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But when you have those opportunities to dive into one of the steps, it'll still be super meaningful, even if you haven't, you know, really dived into the steps prior. Yeah, I think I agree with that. As an outsider, um, you know, I think, so, I, I, first of all, it is very natural. This is, uh, <clears throat> we use the word cause selling, or that, that phraseology, but it is very natural. And it is so, it reduces the amount of stress that a lot of times I think people at, think about when they're involved in fundraising, because it just makes it like a natural component which I think ultimately, Tony, makes it more sustainable. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. And, yeah. and the other thing that I, I wanted to point out, too, is when this curriculum was developed, it really was developed with emerging fundraising professionals in mind. So it really was developed to help support those fundraisers that were one to five years uh, in their career. So like you said, Julia, I could have raised so much more money for my community had I had this understanding. We did this stuff, yes, but we didn't have this understanding or necessarily uh, embraced how it flows and supports each other. So when I hear incredible individuals like you and, and many other folks around the country that have been in the game uh, and passionate about this for a while, to hear them say, wish I had had it, or even today I'm learning from it, or it's reminding me of, uh, of different strategies that I've used in the past. It's super exciting to hear how it supports folks really at any point in their career in fundraising. Right. Well, I want to um, make sure that I, before we move forward, and you can see I have all my notes, <laughs> but I, <laughs> I should have probably taken those out now that I look at this on camera. But I mean, this is, I really do use this. So this is the cost selling textbook from National University. Um, as I understand it, you are in revision for an updated book. Um, but this is where we, we, we actually take this information from as part mm -hmm. of your curriculum. So let's dive in. And first off, talking about donor approach, can you give us just a real quick, like, what does this mean? Because we have seven of these. Yeah, yeah, we, we definitely do. There, there are seven approaches, or, or at least we're highlighting seven mm -hmm. uh, different types of approaches uh, that folks may use. Uh, but when we talk about approach, it's really about making a meaningful first impression. And how do we do that? Uh, so that's part of the approach. And again, for those folks that might dive in a little bit deeper into the curriculum and, and get the textbook, there's so much oh, <laughs> in there, yeah. in there about approach and, and yeah. first impressions and, and all of that mindfulness uh, and intention that needs to go into uh, into your your thought process, right? When uh, before you you actually uh, engage with the donor, but that's really what it's all about. It's you know making a meaningful first impression. Uh, opening up the conversation because we talked about how these steps are you know are, are kind of stackable if you will so the next step would is um is needs discovery so your approach really helps set the stage for a successful needs discovery conversation with the potential donor investor uh, for your cause so I, I love that you talked about this because it makes me think that if you understand these seven um, items, that you're not just like, oh, I was successful or, oh, I was not successful. It, it makes me think that you can understand how or why you were successful or how mm -hmm. or why you weren't successful. Mm -hmm. And so the first donor approach you talk about is relevant, the relevancy of a project approach. Talk to us about that. 
Yeah, so that so that is letting the potential donor investor to your organization know that you've done your research and you know what some of these specific areas are that are closest to their heart. What are their passion places? Uh, so, so by using this relevant approach, you are uh, acknowledging to this individual that you have done your research, you know where their heart is sitting when it comes to their philanthropic giving. Wow, so we've talked about this a little bit before and I've asked you this question and I'll ask you again. Does this seem intrusive when as a fundraiser, I go before somebody and I say, I've done my research and I know that you're interested in animal welfare, let's just say. It, does that is that how you would go about this or do you not use that word i've done my research i mean like <laughs> do you see what i'm saying i i totally i totally see what you know i totally see what you're saying uh but leading up to the approach you've had some pre-approach like the approach is like now we're here okay so, you know and and, and face to face and whatever that might mean right okay. that could be online a digital you know convening face to face you know in, in some other uh, brick and mortar location uh so you've had some some interaction prior to this you know this convening so you may have learned some of this through the original conversations uh but i don't think that there's anything wrong to and again when you some of this will make more sense when folks take a deeper dive into into the curriculum, mm -hmm. uh, but also as part of your your pre-approach and your prospecting, mm -hmm. you're learning about these individuals. You might see them on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. you might see them on Instagram, uh, and even just through those, you will get some understanding potentially of, of their passion so that you can come to them with that relevant approach. So okay. I, would, I, I don't know that I would necessarily say, I've checked you out. <laughs> And well, because you know, I checked you out, this is what I know. You know what? You used a, a really good word. And I don't know if this is because you come from National University, but it could be. But you used the word learning. I, mm. I've been learning. And I think that's a better, that that's more comfortable than I've done my research and I checked you out. So I, I, I get that, you know. Um, anyway, I, I just had to like, put you on the hot seat a little bit. Okay, so we've gone from relevant impact um, or relevant, relevant project. Yeah. Now we're going to talk about impact. What does that mean? Because we use the word impact like it's the holy grail of all things in the nonprofit sector. But what are you talking about here? Yeah, so this is where this approach con conveys, you know, your organization's impact and also what could happen to your organization if you were unable to continue that work. Oh. So again, it's part of, you know, it's part of, of understanding your your potential donor prior to, you know, the, this meeting uh, so that you would know potentially the types of things that uh, that would intrigue them around. And if are they results driven is are those impact numbers going to really resonate with them? Uh, we have a whole nother separate uh, session on donor styles <laughs> and even understanding the donor style before going into this will help you also determine which of these approaches you might want to use because the impact approach may not be right for for everyone right just like the relevant approach none of these approaches are meant to be a one-size-fits-all that's why we're showing you seven of them and I'm, I'm sure you know viewers and listeners could probably add another seven you know, based on, yeah. on their experiences. So the, you know, the impact of approach is something like, you know, because of, of individuals and donors like you, 20,000 children in our community don't have to worry about going to bed hungry. Mm -hmm. So when I hear you use this, when we're talking about this donor approach, would it be fair to say that this is going to be much more of like a stats based for sure number oriented and I don't want to discount this, but maybe less emotional and more um, scientific. Does it's, that make well, sense? I think it's a good marriage of, of data and, and passion because, okay. yeah, I, I think, but, but definitely the, the data piece mm -hmm. that you're calling out is, is, is at the forefront mm -hmm. of this impact approach. 
Yeah, interesting. Well, and you know, I think that it's not just for the individuals, but I think funders, and, and you've used that word brilliantly, the donor investor, this is where we're going, folks. Mm -hmm. I mean, you gotta, you gotta really have some metrics about your organization because mm -hmm. don't you think, Tony, I mean, this is like one of the biggest trends in the last five years of our sector. And, and I don't, you know, I don't want to, to sway us too far off topic, but this is also where organizations need to have really tight alignment between programs and fundraising so that fundraisers can go out there and talk about the results of programs and, and really be able to share the impact of the programs that they're hoping that this potential donor investor will want to support. Yeah, I, 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 I'm really, really glad you brought that up because I think you're absolutely right. And, and if ever we needed a reason to understand why this is, you know, all of a sudden um, something that everybody's talking about, it's that. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, really brilliant. Okay, so we've got um, one and two. We've talked about, um, you know, the alliance aspect of how you work with donors. And we're now going to move on to step number three. And this, I, I told you um, off air, or maybe it was we were in the green room chatter at this point, but I think this is like one of my favorite words at curiosity, the curiosity approach. And I'm super intrigued because we don't use this word a lot with fundraising. So what does this mean? Well, I can tell you that, you know, at National University, and especially today, we, we have new leadership, a new president for the university, and a curiosity mindset is something that's running you know, through our entire organization, where we really are instilling uh, this curiosity mindset. Uh, so the curiosity approach is where you get the potential donor investor thinking about something as you start the conversation, right? Because again, these approaches are meant to lead you to the needs discovery so you can have the larger conversation around what really resonates with the individual that, that you want to help support your cause. So the curiosity approach, some might find it gimmicky uh, and you, you, know, you have to be a little careful because a driver or an analytical person is not gonna be like, why are you ask? Why are you asking me this this question? Uh, okay, but, you know, that's but, interesting. <laughs> but you know, I mean, so so the curiosity approach might be something like, have you ever imagined what it might feel like to know that your actions helped a child sleep better at night? <sighs> So wow. it's so that's just yeah, and that's just off the top of my head. I mean, there's but that's that's kind of an example of a of a curiosity question where you are challenging in the best possible way mm -hmm. uh, the potential donor investor to really create a vision in their mind and really sit back and think, how would I feel if I had that opportunity? Mm -hmm. You know, Tony, this seems to me like, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this seems to me like a question or approach for a donor that I might quantify as like a big idea. Mm. Like not, okay, join us in the mission and you're gonna be one of many doing the same thing, but this is the bigger picture. This is like a named project or a named building. Is that, would that be- Yes, fair? yes, Julia, yes. I mean, I, I was going to say this, this approach in, in, in my humble opinion, is perfect when you're in a capital campaign. Oh. This type of curiosity question, I think, is is really uh, really effective uh, when you're when you're in a capital campaign. I love it. I love it. I think this is a, a really cool idea. Um, I see it's not for everyone. Before we move on, do you sense that this might be? Uh, better for a certain demographic or age group, or or is this more like a personality thing? I think it's more of a person. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't want to kind of box it into okay. a demographic or, or. Yeah, I mean, I think I think asking that question can, you know, can get anyone excited uh, mm -hmm. about the answer, or really, you know, create that opportunity for them maybe to sit back and reflect a little bit mm -hmm. uh, before they launch into their answer. Mm -hmm. 
You know, it's such an interesting thing to be thinking about this entire process. And and I'm going to go ahead and 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 pull up a, a a list of all of our donor approaches. And there's seven seven main ones that in the cause selling cycle you talk about. And we've talked about this morning the relevant, the impact, and the curiosity. Um, and and what I heard you saying, and maybe this is like the first time I've really understood this, but you're kind of saying to us, these are the, you've already done your homework. You've already kind of figured out who it is you're gonna be talking to. This, is, this structure is just helping you refine how you're talking to somebody. Exactly, yeah, you know, it's really meant to be a tool, again, to help open up and start the conversation. Okay. Right. Again, to really bridging into that that larger needs discovery mm -hmm. conversation. Uh, again, it's it's just it's it's an opportunity, as you're saying, to reflect on what you know about this potential donor and investor, and which of these approaches might really resonate with that individual. Mm -hmm. uh, so that you're just again, it, it's all about providing tools and helping fundraisers be as best prepared as possible for that moment of truth. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Okay, now we don't have a lot of time left. I know it goes by too fast. It goes by too fast. Tomorrow, stay with us because we're going to go through the, the last four. But ever since I've been preparing for this discussion with you and thinking about this, a question popped up into my head that I just had to ask today as, as we're finishing up. If you're meeting with a couple and you've determined that one might be one way and one might be the other, how do you bridge that? Mm. That is a, a really good question. Um, and I think I'd be able, I'm probably setting myself up for an even tougher question, but I, <laughs> <laughs> but so this is where I, this is where I reflect on the other tools that are available through cost selling, like the donor styles, right? So okay. I could, I could, I could, you know, kind of figure out, you know, the donor style of, of companion A and the donor style of companion B right. or, you know, companion C, you know, it's 2023. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and. And if I if I understood their donor style, then I might be able to see some connectivity or where yeah. where some blind spots might be in my in my approach. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say, you know, that's when you have to take a really invest more time. That's why it's called development, <laughs> and go deeper <laughs> before you 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 have your approach. Mm -hmm. So you're you're understanding and and being mindful of the different styles within that couple. Right. Well, and I'm because I'm thinking about now like multi generational. You have maybe the parents, and then you have, you know, the kids, or you have the grandkids, or you have a financial advisor, or you have the attorney or the accountant. Um, sure. It's it's a lot of voices now getting involved in this process, and so and, and, and I would say probably the most common um, kind of yin and yang of that mm -hmm. would be the impact approach and the curiosity approach, right? Because they're they're pretty they're pretty far apart in the spectrum, right? So they're kind of the, uh, what you would come across. And again, you can do that. It's, it's easy to ask that question, right? How would you feel if you could help 10,000 children? Love it. You know, so there's, there's ways to connect that. To Mary. Yeah. I love that. Okay, cool. Well, I'm glad I asked that question. I know that was, uh, like I said, it's, it's been something that I've really been thinking about and, and kind of because you know tony whenever we do these um we have these opportunities to really learn from you it dredges up in me personally all these times i've sat across the desk and asked for money or tried to build engagement and i wasn't successful right mm -hmm. so because i've been going back you know 30 years of doing this in my community going why didn't this work and and so that was one of those things that, that popped up. But anyway, Julia, this... Julia, give yourself some grace on that and, and don't spend too much time. <laughs> You've unlocked a piece of my brain, sadly. But no, I mean, it really does, Tony. I sure. really, it really does make me think, you know, okay, 
when I was with that donor at soup and salad or super salad, whatever. And, you know, <laughs> I didn't get the million dollars. I only got 500 grand. What happened? You know what I mean? So anyway, um, now tomorrow we're going to go through four more. Um, and again, this is all about understanding how we can do a better job of connecting with our donors, building longer term relationships and really making sure that we are setting everybody up for success. So, um, stick with us tomorrow. Again, we don't do this very often. It's really um, a treat for us to be able to get this added thing. Um, Tony Bell, direct, Senior Director of Relationship Center at National University Fundraising Academy. Again, Tony being an individual that's been in our sector and understands this, you're not just an academician, but you've really walked the walk. So it has been amazing. Before we let you go, could you very briefly talk about My Learning Portal? It's a new concept, and it's for the mo for the most part, it's free, right? It, it, well, for the all part. Oh, for the all part. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, mean, I mean, currently for the all part. So, uh, <laughs> so I, you know, erupting goosebumps. I'm so excited. The fundraising <laughs> academy team, you know, under the direction and leadership of an incredible director, Pearl Hoagland, mm -hmm. uh, have created this incredible digital resource uh, that is is free. You can go the the URL is on the you know lower right hand corner of the screen. I think it's on my. Yep. Right it is <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and you, you know, create, you know, user ID and password, and you have access to so much of the cause selling curriculum uh, mm -hmm. through the portal. So again, you can take a little deeper dive into what we've talked about today, mm -hmm. uh, but it really is part of our commitment and National University's commitment uh, to elevate uh, the nonprofit sector and specifically the work of fundraisers and provide them with with accessible tools uh, to help them excel and, and better support the communities they serve. It's amazing. It's really beautifully done. It's logical. It's easy to use. And it really um, allows you, I think, Tony, if you were having an issue or a concern or you had lost your confidence in something, you can go on and really help drill down on what you know where you need help right where, where mm -hmm. you need some extra support so and, and there uh, are a few resources there that we created that aren't in the textbook oh. so uh, yeah so you'll 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 find some uh, some other secret sauce in in the portal there i love it it's beautifully done i can't uh, recommend it enough online.fundraising-academy excuse me hyphen academy.org check them out again i'm julia patrick ceo of the american nonprofit academy jared ransom the nonprofit nerd will be back with us again tomorrow we want to thank all of our presenting sponsors who allow these types of conversations from bloomerang american nonprofit academy your part-time controller be generous fundraising academy at national university staffing boutique nonprofit thought leader and the nonprofit nerd wow you've really got me thinking in a new way today, Tony, that is so much more, I have to say, it kind of like builds my confidence in the process. Did I pique your curiosity? You did. And you made me think that if, if, I, if I know these things, that I'm not like winging it while I'm meeting with somebody. Does that make right. sense? I don't yeah. know if I'm articulating that, but... I can go in to meet with a donor investor more confident because I've already figured out this is the way I'm going to take the conversation. And you're also aware of the other approaches. So let's say, for example, you you know you kind of misfire with the first approach. You can pivot and think about the other approaches that you're aware of and make that shift. So love that. That's a yeah. That's a really good comment. Well, we've talked about three of the seven. Mm -hmm. Join us tomorrow because we're going to be finishing up with the next four, mm -hmm. which are just as powerful, extremely different, but so relevant. Um, and again, with my dog-eared copy of <laughs> the past selling book, I think it's going to be time for me to get a new book. <laughs> anyway, hey, everybody, this has been a lot of fun. Yeah, super, super valuable um, to have any time I get with the amazing Tony Bell of Fundraising Academy at National University. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Julia. Be well. Hey, have a great day. And as we remind everyone to stay well so you can do well. 
Thanks everybody. We'll see you back here tomorrow.